Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you've come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the longevity products or skin health or ingredients or formulations or something you may have heard about or read about, we want to help clear up confusion on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity business or comments or success story, which we especially love hearing, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side today and every day. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended or advertised in the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Those are our blogs. We update regularly with blog posts as well as news stories. You can also go to benfuchsarchives.com. All our programs are archived at benfuchsarchives.com and also brightsideben.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth Treatment products, including our 5% retinol gel, head over to truthtreatments.com. That's truthtreatments.com. Okay, we're talking hyperpigmentation of the skin, melasma, skin oiliness, hypertension, inability to heal, inhibition of uh, or suppression of the healing process, degeneration, inflammation, immune diseases, which is basically all chronic degenerative diseases. They're all immune and inflammatory uh, health challenges at their core. They're, all of these issues have one single thread that runs behind them all. They have one thing in common. They're all manifestations of a long-term stress response. The stress response is wonderful. Praise God we've got a stress response that's housed largely in the adrenal glands, but it's only supposed to kick in once in a while. And once it kicks in, it's only supposed to kick in for a very short period of time. So when we talk about stress as being the cause, we talk about stress as being behind hyperpigmentation and skin oiliness and high blood pressure, et cetera, we're talking about long-term chronic drip, 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 low levels of stress that never ends. For some of us, it just goes on and on and on and on pretty much for our whole lives, except when we're sleeping. And you know what? Sometimes we don't even sleep. If you have a problem with that, with insomnia, rest assured you got the chronic long-term drip, 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 slow, low-level stress. This is what insomnia is about. I get all kinds of letters from people who can't sleep. Sure, melatonin will help you sleep, lithium, GABA, even niacin. There's lots of things you can use, magnesium. There's lots of things you can use to kind of calm the body down. But as long as you have this stress response that's kicking in, the body isn't going to let you sleep. You know what? We may be stupid. Human beings may be dumb. You and I may be dumb, but the body is not. If the body perceives that its life is at stake, and this is what the, the stress response really is about, it's a survival response. If the body perceives that there's this survival threat, it's not going to let you fall asleep. It's not going to let you make a baby. It's not going to let your blood pressure go down. It's not going to let your digestive system work. It's not going to let you heal. It's not going to let you build. See what I'm saying here, you guys? 
Behind it all is a body in distress. Behind every one of our health challenges, you will find the chemistry of survival. And this stress response, this survival response is controlled or mediated by hormones, meaning we have a stressor, and that stressor can be physical, it can be blood sugar stressors, it could be toxicity that's coming in through the digestive system, it could be uh, problems with respiration, lack of, uh, lack of oxygenation, or it could be psychological. It could be a credit card bill. It could be a, a problem with your kids or your wife or your relationship. It could be the news. It could be something that you hear about on, you know, that's, that freaks you out that you hear about on CNN, whatever. You get a, stress, you get a stressor that comes into your life and st uh, specific hormones, stress hormones, are secreted from the adrenal glands and the, the stress response is initiated. The response begins. So stress leads to hormone secretion. Then the stress response, be it hyperpigmentation, hypertension, oily skin, or whatever. In other words, once stress hormones are released into the body, the body will respond in multiple ways. And these responses, when they occur over and over and over again, and they never end, are behind our health crisis. And it's not a doctor issue. This is the reason why the medical model is a failure, an utter and complete failure, an embarrassment, really, for chronic degenerative health issues. If you're a medical professional, you should be embarrassed of your profession when it comes to treating, uh, when it comes to dealing with or treating chronic degenerative health issues. I'm a pharmacist. As a member of the pharmacy community, I'm embarrassed about how pharmacy works, how it poisons the body. If you're a medical, if you're a doctor, you should be embarrassed too. It's a, a disgrace, really, to take money and to position ourselves as healthcare professionals, and we have this epidemic of chronic degenerative disease, but no matter, because it's all something that we as individuals can take care of ourselves. So the stress response that follows the hormone secretion, that follows the stress, can be high blood pressure, oily skin, dark, a melasma, dark spots, a suppression of the digestive movement leading to constipation, sometimes a loosening of the lower bowel that leads to diarrhea or loose stools, suppression of immunity, suppression of the protective response, all of these follow stress hormone secretion. There's four major stress hormones. You've got adrenaline, that's for immediate action, that's for super duper emergencies, quick action, and then for longer term action, cortisol, and then estrogen for an inflammatory response. The inflammatory response also is part of stress. And then you got the fourth hormone, the one that nobody talks about, the one that we've, we've been talking about here on the bright side. It's called aldosterone, poorly recognized as it is. That's our mineral control hormone. It controls blood pressure, and it's the one where the so-called ACE inhibitor drugs work. Kozar, Losartan, Zestrel, Prinavil. I remember when I, uh, when I was in uh, practicing retail pharmacy, there was a drug called Vasotec. It was a revolutionary high blood pressure drug. came out, I believe, in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Since then, all these other ones have come out. These are ACE inhibitor drugs. I'm not going to tell you what ACE stands for. It's all complicated. Well, angiotensin converting enzyme. That's what ACE stands for. But it doesn't matter. The way it works is by suppressing aldosterone because aldosterone is a, a high blood pressure hormone. It increases blood pressure. So by suppressing it, you lower blood pressure. This is how the medical model works. This is how the pharmacy model works. Let's shut down enzymes. Let's shut down chemistry. Let's poison the body, and then the blood pressure will drop. Uh, okay, that makes sense. I'll poison my heart, and then my blood pressure will drop. I'll poison my, my uh, aldosterone stress hormone system, and then my blood pressure will drop. Brilliant, brilliant strategy. Anyway, aldosterone goes up in response to stress. Salts and electrolytes come out of cells and into the blood. Water always follows salt. Remember this, water follows minerals. Minerals suck up water. If you've ever taken the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and you've ended up with loose stools or cramping, that's because of this property, this effect. The minerals and the electrolytes in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, there's so many of them, it's so dense with these minerals and electrolytes. If you do too much all at once because water follows minerals, the minerals will not get absorbed if you have too much or you're not absorbing properly. Water follows those minerals and you end up with loose stools or sometimes cramping. Water always follows minerals. In the case of the blood, aldosterone releases minerals into the blood. Water follows minerals. The blood volume expands. There's more fluid in the, in the blood and the pressure goes up. But there's a problem after that you lose your minerals, and that's a big problem. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 
are back on the bright side. We've got a couple lines open for you. 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here momentarily. If you're interested in purchasing any of our truth treatment products, including our retinol 5% gel or omega-6 healing cream or truth serum or truth balm, all made with lots and lots and lots of vitamin C. Fat-soluble premium vitamins. Not the cheapo kind that you get at the drugstore. Not the cheapo kind that you get at the salon or the doctor's office. But the good stuff. The lipophilic premium vitamin C. And this is why you only use tiny little, bi- tiny little bits of the Truth products. It lasts three or four months per jar. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, the ones I take, the ones I recommend, the ones I've taken and recommended now for 18 years, you can head over to brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or also uh, pharmacistben.com. Order products right off the website and also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. Okay, 844 236 6010 is our number. Got four major stress hormones, cortisol, which we talk about all the time. That's a that's a kind of long term stress hormone, relatively long term. None of the stress hormones are supposed to be secreted for too long a period, but over the course of hours, perhaps, cortisol helps manage the stress response. Adrenaline is for instant. Uh, instant response to stress. You ever see those those movies or or uh, the the stereotype of the little old lady lifting up the car because a, a baby is underneath, or these these great feats of strength that are performed by people when there's an emergency. They're usually operating under the control of the hormone adrenaline. Everybody's heard of adrenaline. Cortisol is a more longer-acting stress hormone. And then estrogen, believe it or not, and you guys listening to this program know this because we talk about it all the time, but most folks don't realize estrogen is really one of the hormones that mediate the stress response, particularly when it comes to immunity and inflammation. The fourth stress hormone is the mineral stress hormone. That's the one that raises our blood pressure by uh, uh, enhancing the movement of minerals out of cells into the blood. As as, uh, minerals move out of cells into the blood, water follows. Water always follows minerals. That's called osmosis. Water follows minerals. uh, Minerals have an osmotic effect. They pull water. The water goes into the blood. It raises the volume and the pressure increases. Here's the problem. As the minerals are leaving the cells and entering into the blood, eventually they get excreted through the kidneys. While they're water soluble, they go right through the kidneys and ultimately we lose our sodium and potassium and magnesium and our calcium and our chloride. That means the more stress we're under, the more likely we are to be mineral deficient. The more stress we're under, the more likely we are to be electrolyte deficient. Electrolytes conduct electricity. The more stress we're under, the more electrolyte deficient we become, the lower our body's electricity and the more we feel like crap. This is called adrenal fatigue. And it's the result of a long-term stress response that leads to mineral depletion from cells and mineral depletion from the body. That's why the more stress we're dealing with and the higher our blood pressure, the more important and helpful it becomes to make sure you're getting your electrolytes. The veggies, fruits, and other living foods, including nutritional yeast, which is a wonderful, amazing, amazing nutritional food, living food. You know, when you nutritional yeast and brewer's yeast, they're alive. You're actually eating yeast cells, and those yeast cells are loaded with minerals, loaded with selenium, loaded with magnesium, loaded with B vitamins, loaded with electrical nutrients. Put a little yeast on your salads. Put a little yeast in your in your uh, smoothies. And don't worry if somebody told you you have yeast infection or candida. It's a completely different yeast. It's not the same thing. Eggs and sprouts and veggies. These are all wonderful ways to replace electrolytes. And if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue issues, it's a must. It's not optional. Get a Vitamix. Get a Nutribullet. Make fresh celery juice. Throw in a couple of beets or a couple pieces of beet, and you'll get some flavor in there. Celery tastes great anyway. And always mix salt in, Celtic sea salt, that is, with your celery juice, with your vegetable juice. The combination of the electrolytes and the salt and the water and the vortex, the spinning vortex of your blender, will generate an electrical charge. You'll be drinking electrical energy. One of my all-time favorite living foods is oysters, raw oysters, which are great sources of electrolytes, especially potassium and sodium as well as magnesium. The more stress you're under, the more adrenal issues you have, 
the higher your blood pressure, especially if it's high blood pressure, a combination of high blood pressure and, and oily skin and high blood pressure and melasma and dark spots, you can rest assured you got an adrenal problem. That means the more important it is to make sure you're drinking electrolytes, getting your electrolytes. Of course, your electrolyte BTT, your electrolyte rich beyond tangy tangerine, can be super duper important and helpful. Ask him. Just drinking plain old salt water. Just drinking Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt. How do you like that? The higher your aldosterone is and the longer your blood pressure is elevated, the more likely you are to be salt deficient. And of course, our brilliant medical model says, well, that's when you don't want to drink salt or that's when you want to stay away from salt. Now, I'm not talking here about Morton salt. I'm talking about Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt. Morton's, Morton's uh, or any table salt will give you sodium and chloride, but the main salts in the body are the potassium, the magnesium, and the calcium in addition to the sodium chloride. So the higher your blood pressure or the longer your blood pressure is elevated, the more likely you are to be salt deficient, especially if you have other symptoms of, adrenal, uh, of excess adrenal activity, including melasma and, and dark spots, the more important it is to drink salt water. And you know how you can tell if you should be drinking salt water? If you feel better after you drink it. All right. If you feel better after you do a little bit of Celtic sea salt water, you know you needed that salt, regardless of what your doctor told you. And by the way, intelligent researchers now understand that uh, it's time to end this silliness about low salt. If your doctor is still on this low salt kick, then uh, you might want to tell them to do a little bit of research. You might want to tell them to like become a researcher or a student, uh, a student of biochemistry. Fact of the matter is, aldosterone and blood elevated blood pressure typically elevated aldosterone and elevated blood pressure typically lead to salt deficiency, which means you want salt, not low salt. You want to make sure you're having salt: potassium, magnesium, calcium, sodium, and chloride. In the skin, sweat glands and oil glands are also activated by the stress hormone aldosterone. We've talked about oily skin and, and uh, uh, oily skin and, and that's associated with acne, or just oily skin in general, as a sign that the body is in distress, as a manifestation of the stress response. And we've talked about oily skin as it as it is a result of elevated cortisol, but also elevated aldosterone will lead to oily skin. You actually have little aldosterone, aldosterone sensitive oil glands. Oil glands and sweat glands for that matter are both responsive to aldosterone and blocking aldosterone with drugs is actually a dermatology strategy for treating acne. There's a drug called spironolactone. Some of you may have heard of. Spironolactone is a drug that blocks aldosterone. And the logic is, by blocking aldosterone, you dry up your skin oils. Now, spironolactone is a blood pressure drug. It was developed to lower blood pressure by blocking aldosterone. But it turns out that will also help slow down the production of oil. Sometimes dermatologists will prescribe it topically. I used to make a spironolactone cream for patients who had really oily skin. They just apply topically. and It was supposed to help dry up skin oils via this aldosterone blocking effect. I never did find it to be very effective, understandably, because aldosterone is a stress hormone and you're not going to lower it by rubbing it on your skin. So how do you make sure your aldosterone and your adrenal glands are all operating and operating correctly, everything's firing on all cylinders? How do we support aldosterone so it's not being secreted in excess? How do you stabilize it? How do we protect and nourish the adrenal glands to prevent burnout? And adrenal fatigue, well, there's lots of ways. Nutritional supplementation is great. Dietary strategy is great. And there's a really cool strategy you could use. I'll tell you what that is here when we come back from our break. You We're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in just a moment. And we do have lines open for you if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or skin health, skin care products, ingredients, the longevity products, or if you have a success story or you'd like to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get to our calls here momentarily. So how do you make sure your aldosterone and your adrenal glands and your stress system is operating correctly? Well, there's lots of ways, and we're going to talk about a bunch of nutritional strategies. But one of my all-time favorite ways to stabilize the body, to relax the body, to uh, protect the adrenal glands, and to make sure your aldosterone system is running pristinely and operating correctly is to go out and get some sun. Lay out in the sun. Vitamin D 
which is stimulated by solar rays. Vitamin D hits the skin, hits cholesterol in the skin for that matter, and turns it into vitamin D. Vitamin D lowers aldosterone levels. Vitamin D is ridiculously important. There's so many ways vitamin D is important for health, for immune health, for digestive health, for relaxation reasons. Vitamin D, as it turns out, also lowers aldosterone levels. That means lower blood pressure. Vitamin D will lower your blood pressure. The sun is your best antihypertensive. When was the last time you got a prescription for the sun? Oh, never, because you don't pay for it. It's free. Nobody can bill you for the sun yet. You haven't figured out how to do that. I'm sure one of these days that'll happen, but for now, you can lower your, lower your blood pressure for free and improve digestive health and improve immune health and improve mood. All of these things are associated with vitamin D. Vitamin D, by the way, is well known as an a, um, anti-muscular, uh, anti-multiple sclerosis substance. Being a multiple sclerosis, turns out melatonin is also important for helping reduce multiple sclerosis flare-ups. This is an article that I got here off of, uh, boom, 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 from the, uh, from the Mauricio Farez and Jorge Carelle Institute of Neurologi Neurological Research in Argentina. Seasonal flare-ups in patients with multiple sclerosis are caused by plummeting levels of melatonin. Making sure you're getting enough melatonin. Melatonin is also super relaxing. Anyway, vitamin D, antihypertensive via the sun. Another reason to get out in the sun. Doctors will tell you to stay out of the sun. If you have hypertension, you avoid the sun, you're increasing the likelihood that you're going to be put on an ACE inhibitor or, or an antihypertensive of, of some kind. Lower your blood pressure by laying out in the sun. Now, that's my kind of medicine. All right, got so much more to say. I want to tell you about African Americans uh, and their risk of hypertension uh, because of their pigmentation, as it turns out. We'll talk about that tomorrow or on our next Bright Side episode. Then we'll talk about some nutritional strategies for the adrenal glands, for lowering blood pressure, and also for stabilizing aldosterone. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Let's go to California and talk to my buddy Graziano. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Hey, Ben. It's good to talk to you. Good to talk to you as well. What's cooking? Oh, hey, you uh, want to talk first, about uh, the seizures? Is that what you're, you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, the seizures and the ketogenic diet. I've had a good friend. Uh, they got two sons that are like 13 and I think 11, and both of them have seizures. So okay. um, I just kind of, and I think they might be listening to the show right now. Oh, or perfect. I'm send okay. To them, so. Let's talk about Sorry. seizure disorders, okay? And we'll talk about it as it relates to the ketogenic diet. First of all, a seizure uh, is a sign that the electrical current through the brain is jumpy. It's short-circuiting. Electrical, The body's an electrical system in general, but the most electrical part of the body is probably the brain. And electrical energy has to run smoothly through the brain. Under conditions of inflammation or nutritional deficiency, under conditions of high energy in the brain, especially in combination with nutritional deficiency, what you're going to end up with is short circuits. The energy will not be conducted in a smooth fashion, and you'll be, it'll become jumpy. You want to look to inflammation, nutritional deficiencies, and also high energy, lots of, lots of electrical energy. Well, let's take the first one, the first element, which is super high amounts of electrical energy. Sugar is highly energetic, and this is, the, this is where the benefit of the ketogenic diet comes in it's a low sugar diet you know a lot of folks always a lot of folks talk about the paleo diet you know the paleo diet is a marketing term paleo diet paleolithic eating this is all marketing there's no way we're going to eat paleolithically our paleolithic ancestors didn't eat coconut flour our paleolithic ancestors ate raw meat or cooked maybe quickly roasted meat they didn't eat paleolithic snack bars and paleolithic gluten-free pizza. So you can't really eat paleo. That's not logical. But what is logical is to go ketogenic. Ketogenic means low carbohydrate and uh, mostly fat and protein, especially coconut oil fat. And coconut oil is super important for seizure disorders for that reason. So the ketogenic diet slows the body down. This is why it has so many multiple benefits. Being low sugar, it has a it releases energy. The food energy is released slowly and in a kind of low level. When you eat sugar, you get a quick spike in energy. This is the problem with the standard American diet. We get these quick spikes of energy, and then the body's energy management system has to kick in. With the ketogenic diet, which is a protein diet, 
and a fat diet, protein, I, hate, I hesitate to say high protein or high fat, it's just, it's just mostly protein and mostly fat, good fat that is, that slows everything down in the body. That's why it's so helpful for cancer, that's why it's so helpful for longevity, that's why it's so helpful for brain issues, that's why it's so helpful for seizure disorders. Does that make sense the way I explain that, Graziano? It kind of slows yes, the body down. It's like your computer, you know? You don't want your hard drive running really hot. You want your hard drive running cool. That's why there's a fan in it. So it's the same thing with the body. The body is like a super high-tech biological computer, and just like you don't want your hard drive overheating, you don't want your body overheating, sugar overheats it. The ketogenic diet cools things down. Step number one. Step number two, if you're dealing with a seizure disorder, is you've got to stop the stream of inflammatory chemicals inflammatory molecules that come in through the diet. That means staying away from any foods that cause any kind of digestive distress. Staying away from pro-inflammatory foods. Again, sugars, refined flours, trans fatty acids, and pretty much any processed foods are going to make the brain hyper-excitable, hyperactive. And speaking of hyper-excitable, excitotoxins, these are food additives, especially food additives that are used to make crappy foods more palatable. MSG and such, these things have to be avoided as well because, again, they hype up the brain. They run up, they, they rev up the electrical energy of the brain. So, number one, the ketogenic diet. Number two, staying away from pro inflammatory foods. And number three, stabilizing electrical energy with nutrition. And there's lots of wonderful nutrients that help do that. One of the most is uh, one of the most important is something called taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E. Everybody with a seizure disorder needs to be on taurine. Anybody with a heart problem should probably be on taurine also. You know, if you look in the ingredient deck of your Red Bull, you'll find taurine as an ingredient. Why? Because the taurine dampens the excess of energy of the caffeine. Caffeine is, m hypes up the electrical energy of the body. Taurine dampens that electrical energy. Wonderful for helping deal with seizure disorders. The amino acid glycine. Glycine, likewise. Glycine's been used to treat seizure disorders since the 1920s. Taurine and glycine, also arginine might be helpful. The B vitamins are ridiculously important for all electrical issues, including seizure disorders. High doses of the B vitamins, especially niacin and thiamine, those can be helpful. Vitamin C, likewise, and also electrolytes, specifically potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, and chloride, the substances we've been talking about now for a couple weeks. Hang tight, Grazia, a couple more things I want to tell you. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844 Sixty ten is our number. We'll be, we'll be back. You may. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open at eight four four two three six sixty ten. Graziano in California. You there, my man. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so uh, seizure disorders are the manifestation of a hyper excitable state. That's the bottom line. Okay, makes sense so far. Okay, it's compounded by inflammation, nutritional deficiency, perhaps low levels of oxygen, and certainly sugar is a big problem. Glycine, taurine, arginine, these are amino acids that can help slow down, uh, slow down things, slow down um, electrical energy, taurine especially, also glycine. Arginine, not so much, but arginine also has important brain health benefits. The B vitamins, vitamin C, all of your electrolytes, and then, of course, the ketogenic diet, and also caloric restriction in general, just eating less food, just fasting. Fasting is a great anti-seizure strategy, at least caloric restriction. And when I say caloric restriction, I'm not talking about food restriction. I'm talking about calorie restriction, so eating high-density uh, nutritional, high nutritional density foods, low calorie, high nutrition. I call that the CRAN diet or the CRON diet, calorie restriction, optimum nutrition. And of course, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a great way to do that. Bone soup, sprouts, living foods, eggs, nutrient dense foods. So you don't have to have as much calories. Calories are, represent heat and energy, and especially foods that are high calorie, low nutrition, those are the worst. Oxygenation, deep breathing techniques can help, again, for the same reason, to re relax that hyper-excitable state. And then there's some miscellaneous relaxing nutrients. GABA is one, so is lithium, 
maybe a 500 milligrams of GABA a day, taking GABA before you go to bed. Lithium is another relaxing nutrient. Melatonin, that can help relax you, although I don't know necessarily if I would use melatonin for a child, but melatonin still has relaxing effects. Niacin, very important B vitamin for the brain, and then of course essential fatty acids, particularly omega-3 fatty acids that come from fish and also from flax. Is that helpful, Graciano? Got lots of good information there, my man. Yeah, that makes that's sense? good. And How you one calm other, the one body down. Thing. Yes. And then one other thing, a good story I wanted to, I've been wanting to call and let you know. Um, I started listening. I, I, my daughter has celiac, so I started listening to you back in October 2011. And 2011? That, I had, yeah, 2011. Wow. And I had, and I had gone to the um, Children's Hospital down in San Diego, and they were... You know, those medical priests were just going crazy, and I, they wanted to give her biopsy. She was two years old. I she was three? My daughter. She was, what, excuse me? She was three, you said? Yeah, and they she want... was three. They, and they're like, well, we think it's celiac, blah, blah, blah. We're going to give her a biopsy. So I'm like, you know what? You're crazy. So I took my daughter <laughs> with my wife. We took us off. By dumb luck, as Joel Wallach talks about, I came across InfoWars. The last five minutes of, your, of this show, you were on there. And within 30 seconds, you opened your mouth and said, the body can heal itself and overcome things like celiac. I'm like, what the heck? So I, like, jumped out of my seat in the office. This is crazy. Either this guy's lying or he's on something that nobody knows. So I started listening to your show, Bright Side Band, instantly applied the BTT, instantly applied everything you talked about to my entire family. Within a fifth of the BTT, my daughter's celiac went away. Wow. That's awesome, and Graciano. She, and she doesn't have it anymore. I mean, that we give her BTT. I started to have the awesome. heart back. I that's did a awesome. food diet, and all her friends are like, wow, you guys are really healthy. What is that you guys do? <laughs> hey, man, I, I listen to Bright Side Band, go to this site. I apply everything he learns. So uh, I do the healthy start pack. I got the CEO pack. I started selling, pushing longevity products, and then they're like, yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. You know, we'll, we'll keep eating unhealthy and, you know, because we love being sick, you know. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, you apply, you know? I know, I know, right. I know what you're talking about. Well, wow, that's some good news, though. I appreciate you sharing that, Graziano. So, Thanks so yeah, much so for I calling on me. Every, yeah, I appreciate everything you do. So keep up the good work, man. Thank you, bro. Be good. Have a good weekend, man. We'll, we'll right, talk again too. soon. Okay. Wow, that's kind of cool. All right, Dustin in Ohio. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, bro? Oh, no, not much. A friend of mine told me about you, and I figured I'd okay. take a listen and give you a First call. day? All right, first day you're listening? Oh, wow. Okay, good. I'm glad you called. What's up, man? Uh, well, uh, starting last November, I uh, had a fever. Ran it for a month and a half. Um, it went away you for a, a while. You had a fever for a month and a half? Yes. It ran at about 103. Wow. For a month um, and a half? Yeah. How old are you, Dustin? I am 35. I was 34 last November. So what else is going on? You have to have something else going on. It's not just a fever. Yeah. Um, well, it went away till about June of 2015, and it came back for, you know, on and off for about a month and a half again. It went away for the month of July, came back in August every other week, and then now for the last month and one week, I've steadily been running low-grade fevers. And now, when you say low-grade, like hundred and th- you're saying low-grade, but 103 is not a low-grade. Well, yeah, the 103 was in November, um, but more recently, it stayed low grade. I haven't gone over 100.9. Okay, that's um, low grade. And no, yes. Okay, so here's what you're going to need to do. First of all, and this is you should start doing this right away. When you run a low grade fever, you're running hot. You're burning through nutrients. Your body, your metabolism's revved up. And that means you're burning through your electrical nutrients, your water-soluble nutrients, etc. So what you need to be doing is, number one, well, number one, you need to be drinking water, all right, lots of it. But not just drinking water. You've got to make sure you're getting your water-soluble nutrients with your water. Get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and I would be doing it sooner rather. I'd be doing it today, especially if you've had this condition going on for as long as you say you've had it. You are very likely running into nutritional deficiencies, and that's going to exacerbate your symptomology. Aside from the cause of whatever the cause is, above and beyond that, you're going to have secondary nutritional deficiencies. Does that make sense? You're running into secondary nutritional deficiencies that are going to make matters worse, and you could end up in this vicious downward spiral. You need the B vitamins, vitamin C, and your electrolytes today. Now, you're going to have to order the BTT if you're not on it already, but what you can do is go to your grocery store and go get some veggies and start making veggie juices. 
and those will be get you some electrolytes, which you probably need right away. And I'd probably be using some vitamin C right away too. So until you get your BTT, you might want to go to the health food store or the, wherever you get your your nutrients and go get some vitamin C. That's just to that's just to to stem the the tide of of, uh, of nutrient loss that's following the fever. But let's get to the fever. That's kind of concerning. There's a lot of reasons why you can run into these. They call them FUOs, fever of unknown yep. origin. Did I tell you that FUOs? Uh, they didn't. That? I figured all that out on my own. On my own. Okay. Well, good <laughs> for you. I haven't been able to tell me anything. Okay. Well, here's the main reasons. You can have an infection somewhere, a bacterial infection. All right. We've ruled that out. Okay. Now, how do you? How did you rule that out? Just a blood test? Uh, yeah, I've had multiple, multiple blood tests. Okay. So I'm still, you know, we'll we'll rule that out for now. But I don't know necessarily that I would if we really want to get to the bottom of things. But just in interest of time, uh, we'll rule out infection. God forbid it could be a malignancy of some kind. It could be a cancer of some kind. But you would have other symptoms, and you don't have any of those. I assume. Do you have anything else going on with your digestive system or blood pressure? Or you're dizzy when you wake up in the morning, or blood sugar, or weight gain issues. Um, and weight loss issues. You yeah, gotta find those. It started, it started. I lost probably twenty to twenty-five pounds uh, with, starting in with, June two thousand fourteen, and because I generally I weighed one forty-five to one thirty-five pounds. That was my how, average range. I how was tall are you? How tall are you? Five four. Okay, so you're five four one twenty-five now. Uh, five four one twenty now. Okay, is it one twenty lean and mean or one twenty skinny? Got muscle on you? Are you working out? Yeah. Are you doing any? No, you are I'm not work- working out, but I'm still toned. Okay, you're still toned. Okay, so we'll we'll rule out uh, we'll rule out any issues of, of, for the dramatic weight loss as long as you're still muscular and toned. It could also be some kind of a blood vessel disease. Sometimes that can do it, and it can also be some kind of uh, well. You said there's no there's no there's no bacterial issue or viral issue. Although I'm not convinced, those usually are the causes. What other symptoms do you have? That's the key. Now um, I don't expect you to answer that right away because you're going to have to search for it. But this is how you do it. This is how you handle the problem. This is for everybody listening. When you have some kind of mysterious issue, you have to put together a picture of symptomology. And I always give this, I love this analogy. It's like um, you're, you sound young and you're only, well, you're only 35. You probably don't know who Bob Ross is. He was a painter who used to be on television and he would show you how easy it is. I when I was a kid. Then you know who I'm talking about, right? He yep. put a little dot in the middle of the painting and you couldn't tell what it was. But then he put a line and all of a sudden you had a river. And then another line, you got a mountain. You know what I'm talking about? And then another yeah. line, all of a sudden there's a, there's a horizon and there's trees. And just with little dots, you form a whole picture. Well, it's the same thing when you're trying to assess what's going on in the body. You need a bunch of dots. Right now, we only got one dot. You know what I'm saying? There's only, we only have the fever dot. We need to find multiple dots so that we can form a picture of what's happening in your body. The dots represent symptoms. So you got some homework to do, and I'm glad to help you with this when you, when you, when you get some data. You've got to collect a bunch of dots, and that means maybe digestive issues, or maybe you're tired when you wake up in the morning, or maybe you're craving sugar or salt, or maybe, you've, like I say, you feel dizzy or woozy when you get up, or, or when you stand, um, get in a to go into a standing position from a sitting position, etc. You gotta look for other symptoms. Right, on, right now, we only have one dot in the middle of our canvas, and there's no picture that we can get. So, if you want to do some homework, collect some dots.